Hi everyone, it's the beginning of the year and with the beginning of the year comes a new topic. The topic for September is situated around single-payer healthcare and for this topic we'll be dabbling into what traditional debate should probably look like for this topic. Hi, my name is Joseph Barquin and this is my LDCoach.com. So what is the topic exactly for September October? Well, they covered it in the progressive circuit debate uh, lecture, and they'll be dealing with a lot of the background information for this topic. This one will generally be just what is in the trad debate circuit, and this is assumed that you've probably paid attention to the first half of Nay's lecture because that's where a lot of the background information for this topic is coming from. So the resolution for the next couple of months is resolved. The United States ought to implement a single-payer universal health care system. Uh, this means a couple of things. One, the debate probably is going to be about the need for health care, what happens when the government gets involved in health care, right? Because that's where a lot of like problems can occur when the government meddles into something that they have no business meddling. That being said, is it already worse than the status quo, i.e. why we need health care for everyone uh, now? instead of just like letting things go as the way they are. This sort of needs to be weighed in the debate if you decide to go this route, but more on that later. Another thing about this topic is there's a lot of fill ground for both the AF and NEG here. We'll be focusing on a couple of them in this particular lecture, uh, mainly Kant and libertarianism, and how they sort of like interact with this topic. And finally, framework is your friend. In this topic especially, there are ways to frame out a debater by using a framework that definitely does not recognize their argument as being legitimate in this debate space. Please overcover framework instead of undercover it, especially if you know you have to win framework to win the debate round. So we'll go to definitions. First one is the United States. Uh, the general principle when it comes to the United States is it's a federal republic of 50 states in North America made up of three branches, the Congress, the Supreme Court, and the executive branch that is the president. Um, this is probably not going to be an area that's going to be very much, you know, attacked. Um, ought will create where your value ought to be. Uh, in this case, ought can be a moral obligation, a duty, and if you want to live a more consequentialism uh, because of the word implement, something that is probable. To implement then is to put into effect. This, if you're doing policy debate or progressive LD debate, is where the policy-centric things come into, uh, come into place. Uh, implement is sort of like, should this even happen in the first place? And the word should means we're going to deal with the cause and effects of what it means to put in single payer uh, health care into the United States. That being said, does that mean we have to debate what happens if we do single payer, i.e. The, the full spectrum of a policy AF? In trad debate, that's going to be one of those like gray areas where technically you don't have to. But you should probably defend a model of implementation that you are probably going to base a lot of your stats around. Because if you don't, and you're just saying that the affirmative is a good idea, because the resolution as a general principle is a good idea, and you're using consequentialism, you're not going to sound very persuasive on this topic. And that's something to keep. Uh, that's something to keep in the back of your mind, right? Figure out which country and which model of single pair you want to do and follow it. Sorry about that. My cat has decided that uh, yeah, they want to be part of this thing. Uh, and finally, single pair universal health care system. You can divvy this up into single pair and the universal health care system. But for this lecture, I'll just make it into one. Um, and this one is a single agency, public or semi-public, i.e. is the government going to be in charge of the single payer system or are they going to outsource it to a private agency that will work in conjunction with the government uh, that will end up being responsible for the entirety of financing health care for all residents in America. Now, who gets health care is going to be not really part of the debate, so please don't bring a lot of that debate into trad because it's one, not necessary, uh, and two, there's enough 
ground for both your affirmative and negative on this topic that you can comfortably not deal with sort of like who should get it, i.e. just all the residents in America, right? So my core thoughts on this topic uh, from the first thought as well as like as I delved into it, um, one thing when you're in trad debate and even in circuit debate, this is going to get really personal at times because not everyone has a rosy relationship to healthcare, uh, especially when it comes to their families and friends, uh, and especially what's been happening around us in the past couple of years. This is going to get personal for some people, and please be, please, 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 be cognizant of the fact that not everyone has had you know perfect health for the past few years. Some people have had to deal with devastating effects. And please be sensitive about that, right? Be careful with how you phrase your words and how you, you dish out your contentions and stuff, right? Please don't offend anyone because then the debates are just not fun. And then why debate at all if the debate is not going to be fun? The second is that this is a hot button issue when it comes to politics uh, in America. A lot of Dems are pro-single-payer. A lot of Republicans are anti-single-payer. So where you are situated in the country will dictate whether or not your judges are a lot more aff-leaning or nag-leaning. And you need to take that into account, right? It means there will be some aff bias areas. I'm pretty sure California is going to be aff bias. I'm sure there's going to be some negative biased areas, i.e. Alabama is probably going to be a little bit more neg biased on this topic. But again, it really depends on your judge and if you can convince them based on the, on the contentions as well as the frameworks that you put forth and whether or not you can convince your judge to vote for you. Remember, they're, they're told before they end up judging you that they should probably remove their biases before the round, right? And above all, just try your best. Regardless of the political affiliation of your judge, you have to debate one side of this topic every other round. So just have fun. Uh, and finally, or second to the last one, is that this is going to be fun for Phil debaters because they're both, there's Kant ground for both the AF and NEG on this and the NEG on libertarianism as well as some other uh, sort of like out there fills that I don't want to get into because I don't want to end up judging them uh, definitely exist. And lastly, the idea of fiat. This is one of those questions where I'm just like, in trad, technically it doesn't exist, but the word implement sort of means you have to defend some form of modeling implementation, i.e. which one are we going to be using in America and which and will it be a good idea, right? A lot of core negative arguments are going to be single payer generic arguments, but that doesn't mean they don't apply to the specific model that the affirmative has. And even better for the negative is if the AF tells you what model they're going after and what they're using forth, and you have core and you have negative evidence that attacks that model, right, either offensive or defensive, then more power to you because that means you've done your research, right? In Nay's topic lecture, they give you an example of multiple countries that have had single payer. I.e., if Japan has a single payer and this is the way that you want to uh, model your affirmative, fine. But you also need to be cognizant, you know. Good negs will prepare that neg uh, case list too. So the values for single payer for this specific topic, uh, similar to any policy centric uh, topic, uh, the values that will work well with util uh, and and core philosophy arguments that are generally Kant or just anything associated with respecting freedom are going to be much loved and much appreciated by judges. Don't try to get too weird in September or October. That's for later on during your state's topic and an SDA and JANFEB. Just keep this simple for September or October. This is a single AF topic. There's technically one AF. It's just how many contentions can we go for and how many ways can we say that the resolution is a good idea with that one half, right? So an uh, examples of for value for this topic, one of them is going to be liberty, right? Liberty associ is associated with things like autonomy uh, of an individual as well as respecting uh, their freedom to do what they want to do and how they want to do it. This is probably going to be a little bit more neg leaning than the AF, though liberty and freedoms means can you even access freedoms in the first place? I.e., if your value is liberty, there's ways that that can be turned by the affirmative. 
because you don't have any liberty if you're facing any structural issues as a term that can be implemented uh, when you're doing the framework debate on the value if you want to go that route. Right? Get a little bit creative. You can probably use liberty on the app uh, as well as on the egg, but it's a little bit more neg leaning uh, for this specific topic. Another one that we can use is quality of life, which is basically just the standard of living uh, that we're okay with. Um, generally, the one that is accepted by most of society is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You all should probably look that up. Uh, but if you know our quality of life is hurt on a systemic level, then that probably means uh, that's not a good thing, right? And this will be a lot more on the AF side, uh, but they can be turned on the NEG side depending on which arguments that they deploy on the contention level of the NEG as well as the case arguments that they deploy against the affirmative. The third one is justice because because it's in every topic, right? Uh, whether or not an action is just uh, is basically being, is it fair through the laws that we've uh, put forth in a society? Uh, America is founded on democratic values and that means uh, justice is a part of it. So we need to figure out, is the action just if we were to implement single-payer universal health care for uh, the United States? And finally, morality, because you can never go wrong with morality, because it fits in to basically any sort of value criterion as well as any contention. Uh, and it is just how right or wrong an action is uh, in this debate. The value criterion, the other part of the framework debate, uh, is how do you uh, then uphold this value? What are, how do we measure whether or not something is just or unjust, whether something is moral or immoral? Well, the first one is consequentialism, and this will be most affirmatives in this topic, if I'm being honest, uh, either in one form or another, and that's basically uh, the effect of an action that is seen as good or bad, usually through body counts, because that's how you tell it works. Uh, consequentialism can further be redefined as something like minimizing structural oppression, because the consequence of doing action or not doing action will have effects on oppression and who feels that oppression. Um, creating quality of life center that benefits those on the margins of society. Generally speaking, this will be associated with the roles and human rights centric uh, debates. This is something that you all should get good at because it's going to be in a lot of affirmatives. There's no ifs and or buts about it. The people who cannot Access healthcare are generally those uh, in the poorer margins of society. That doesn't mean that it's any easier for the middle class of America because healthcare, I think, is between 15% to 33% of a household's income in America, which is a pretty big number. Think about that when you think about taxes on how one pays for single payer and how one uh, will be able to be alleviated with financial security one single payer is put forth. This is both an F and neg argument. Uh, keep that in mind. Upholding equality. This goes for both the affirmative and negative, which one is more equal when it comes to like choices that we can make as well as being able to have choices in the first place, right? Uh, upholding equality is generally based on human rights and the most benefits for everyone in society so that everyone can live in an evil uh live in an equal playing field. Um, there are some philosophies that will uphold this. Generally, Kant and being able to, everyone have the right ability to make a decision all, all in the same playing field. But again, up to debate, up to whether or not you want to use this. My last one is probably respecting freedom because I think this one is going to be the core value criterion for a lot of Phil debaters so, that want to do Phil. And that's probably action should not impede an individual's ability to choose for themselves uh, because if you impede their ability then you are not respecting Kant's philosophy as well as you're violating the tenets of libertarianism because the government having control over healthcare imposing that you must put money into healthcare you don't get a choice you must right means that you the, the government is taking a step way too much into people's lives and that should probably be rejected so what are the affirmative contentions then for this particular topic there's quite a few and this is just a limited amount that i can give you all because time allocation and i don't really like want to get too deep into this find your own you know find your own creative ways to get, get contention so one of them is lack of access um Again, what I said before, about 15 to 33% of a person's income 
is put into healthcare throughout the year, whether or not that is from, you know, just your just whatever you have to pay yearly or having to take in hospital visits, etc., as well as like dental and vision. Those sort of things come out of your pocket every year, regardless of whether or not we have universal health care through single payer. If you're dealing with that, one of the things that you need to look into account when it comes to lack of access is how many people don't have access to health care because of the cost of health care now. And what would the cost of health care be for them if they were to be put into the single payer system, right? And how, how would that look like in terms of the quality of care, as well as does that even matter if they even get health care, right? Because quality of care won't matter as much if you don't have any health care, right? I'd rather have some uh, bad health care than no health care at all, if I'm being honest. And that's probably a much better argument than saying like, waiting times are way too long, so they shouldn't have healthcare in the first place, right? Lack of access is important. It's going to be dealing with a lot of structural issues associated with uh, healthcare, and it's going to really open your eyes as to what part of the population does not have healthcare because it's, they're just priced out, right? There are very, very few states that will price in people who cannot afford health care for free, California being one of them. I think if you live on if you live in the poverty line, California will pay for your health care and they have been doing so for a few years now. And that's something that a lot of states don't do and can't do because they simply can't pay for it. Whereas California is billions of dollars at surplus currently. Another affirmative contention is the inequality uh that it sort of so works with like lack of access. Um, so inequality, like currently in the status quo, even if you do have access to healthcare, depending on who your insurance is and depending where your hospital or clinics are, your healthcare quality will not be as good as say someone in a different region where they definitely can afford better insurance and the quality of their clinics and hospitals are much better in that area. Like inequality and being able to access healthcare when you are poor is just very, very difficult compared to someone who is an upper middle class. And that's something that you all should probably take a look at. And what single payer will do when it comes to resolving inequality issues, when it comes to healthcare access uh, in general, once everyone's on the same playing field, uh, when it comes to having, you know, having good clinics as well as having good hospitals that will take care of them instead of just being put off to the side. Something that Nate talked about that I think you all should also pay attention to on the affirmative is the democracy promotion. Because if we are living in a just democracy, that means that everyone should have a sort of equal footing and not having uh, people be in the same level on a health healthcare sort of area it means that you are not propping up democracy to the extent that it needs to be, right? Healthcare is a popular topic for most people that they want to have healthcare. But refusing to do so means that you are not following the democratic process and the democratic process is sort of important to hold, uphold when you're on a society that is America, right? This will stick back into the value value criterion debate and why respecting democracy is probably a good idea and the effects of democracy of society as a whole. It means more freedom for everyone as well as being able to uh, rep be representative, you know, uh, of our government, like having the government respect those who represent them uh, and doing policies that are popular within the nation, right? So the categorical imperative uh, is definitely something that, you know, is going to be centered in the affirmative. It's not going to be called a categorical imperative contention. It'll just be called offense or why, you know, the affirmative uh, needs to implement healthcare, right? Because current healthcare choice in the status quo is sort of, sort of like a myth, right? You don't really have a choice. It's always which one is the most affordable that you can have that isn't going to suck, right? And so the free market system when it comes to healthcare and having a choice is actually one that is, you know, being blindfolded and not, no real choice in the first place. Putting everyone in the same playing field means that then you are respecting the categorical imperative. So that's a cont F that they can definitely be deployed 
on this topic. And something that I thought about while I was doing my own research was something like healthcare literacy and why having healthcare in the first place means you're more inclined to be conscious of things that are going on around the world that may affect your health as well as, well as those people around you, i.e. If you're more literate when it comes to healthcare issues, and then you're more adaptable uh, to a lot of things going on in the status quo, and you won't be so resistant to it, i.e. pandemics, as well as like vaccines in general, face masks and whatnot, right? Whether or not you agree with that or not, this is something that we can definitely take a look at. So for the negative argument, here's a couple of them. Now the key one here that you all, you all need to make regardless or whether or not you agree with it is the economy debate because it is the main sticking point of most of the negative arguments about single payer, Medicare for all, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, within America. Is this thing will cost way too much? Single payer will cost way too much, and we do not have the money to afford it. We do not have the money to be able to implement it. We do not have the money to keep it going for very long periods of time. If you put in single payer, someone has to pay for it. And it is going to be the taxpayers. And in a world where inflation, supply chain issues, massive layoffs, etc., are happening, putting more burden on the taxpayers, especially when we just pass a new tax plan, right, with this Inflation Act thing, means that People are not going to be very happy. People are not going to have, you know, their hierarchy of needs met. Great, let me have health care, but what happens if I cannot afford food because I have health care? Right? So hard choices need to be made on how this thing will be structured to pay for the single payer. Because if you cannot pay for it and the and the common citizen has to pony up a good chunk of it, you're going to have some very, very negative leading debates because it's just a true argument, right? We are on lean times for a vast majority of Americans. And if we were to implement this now, what would that do to them? There are answers to this, you know, when it comes to, well, that is already being paid for in the status quo, we would just, we would just switch and it would be less actually than what the status quo is demanding of us. But you need to provide those sort of statistics and why those statistics are better than say what the negative is doing, right? The second negative contention, and this is if you're into libertarianism, is the free market is the best market, right? Because of certain things. One is innovation. The free market makes the best innovation when it comes to medicines and procedures for doctors and the healthcare industry. And without the free market and it being controlled by the government, there will be a lack of innovation that is going to be necessary for us to fix future emergencies as well as you know finding cures for cancer and whatnot right without that sort of innovation the healthcare industry will well they basically lag and that's not going to be a very good thing second one is libertarianism i.e government please shoe off if healthcare is joint by the federal government and given to a public entity or even a semi quasi public entity what does that mean right it means that the government is way too much into our everything and that cannot happen. A lot of records will now be accessible by the government that they may not have had before because of privacy laws. Well, certain laws can be passed anytime a Congress to bypass that once they are in the public realm. It means that your privacy is never guaranteed anymore if this comes into fruition. And certain things about just not having a choice right, because it's not up to the free market anymore, means that you are definitely hurting, you know, our ability to create choices, i.e. our freedoms. Last, uh, third was the cost of single payer, similar to the first one, right, how much will this raise taxes, who will it hurt the most, what real effects will this uh, do in terms of their quality of life. A bad quality of life turns most affirmatives. If they hurt the people that they are trying to resolve, it hurts most affirmatives, right? And lastly, something that a lot of people don't realize is we're in a nursing and doctor shortage. Think about that. We do not have enough nurses and doctors in America. Where are we going to find them if we implement single payer and everyone magically 
has healthcare all of a sudden. That's all 300 million plus Americans now being able to go to a clinic or a hospital or whatnot in order to get their needs met. Can their needs even be met if we don't have the labor associated with it? And if we do have the labor, where do we get it from? Well, the Philippines is an easy jumping point, right, for a lot of our uh, imported labor for nurses. But then what happens to their healthcare industry, right? So you all, you all may want to take a look at like, yeah, great, implement single payer, but could we do it once we resolve our doctors and nurses, right, issue, and we can actually give them a job that won't in immediately burn them off because, because of the amount of work that they would have to do, right? So you could delay the affirmative, but just not now, just not now. So tips and last bits for this topic. One, have fun with this topic. This is your first topic, right? And this is a pretty good topic to learn about the healthcare industry as well as our personal, you know, investments into healthcare and what our states and federal governments are doing about it. Similarly to, uh, to the 17, 18 topic in college, we got a firsthand look of how the healthcare system actually worked. And it was eye-opening for many of us. Take this moment to also open your eyes about this important, important issue that's going to be a part of the rest of your high school college and adult life secondly get creative with your contentions don't just limit yourself out to what is core of a topic have fun with it right go find some weird contention that makes a lot of sense because there's only one app on this topic and that's affirming the resolution because it creates a very narrow right sort of field as to what you can do i.e pick a model for single payer and that's your app and then the contention is just things of why we need healthcare uh, in the first place. Third, don't go to nuclear war. This is tried debate, not circuit debate. If you get to nuclear war, you're probably going to lose because most of the impacts uh, in the real literature base for this topic is systemic in nature and not big pew pew, right? So don't go to nuclear war on this topic. Save that for Gen Fed because Gen Fed will probably have, you know, global nuclear war. Um, and don't overdo it. This is a long season ahead. Don't burn out. Burning out is probably not a good idea. September, October, you have a long, long debate season ahead of you. And finally, debating is a process. If you don't get the W's with this topic, that doesn't mean you're bad. It takes a bit of time. Trust yourself. Trust your coaches. Trust your mentors. Trust your teammates. Have fun and go out and debate. This is Joseph Barkman from MyLDCoach.com. Thank you and have a nice day.